Well, hi, everyone. Babula and I are back with our last Astro Update for 2020. Man. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I think most people like us are really glad that 2020 is over. Uh, but, of course, it's not over. It's really, um, well, it is over, but the energies are going to overflow into 2021, starting with the full moon in Cancer. Right, Babula? Yes. That's yes. exactly right. Yes. Yeah, so um, why don't you kick us off starting with that and then we'll talk about um, the other um, star trails and, yes, okay. uh, and what they've got in store for us. Okay, great. So hi, everyone. Um, hope you all had a lovely Christmas. And so we're following on from the recent um, new moon in Sagittarius, which also happened to be an eclipse. So we've just come out of a really big week, as we spoke about last time with the eclipse and the big conjunction, which, by the way, you can still see in the evening sky, even though the exact date of the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn has passed, they're still really close together and will be for some time. So if you get clear skies, look to the west after sunset and you'll see them. I did manage to get one clear evening last week. We've had a lot of cloud cover here in Brisbane. And as soon as I realised it was clear, I jumped in the car and I headed west. I, I headed out of town, you know, head west <laughs> for 20 minutes and got out onto a quiet country road. <gasps> and it was fantastic. It was oh, quiet. Wow. There were no street lights. There was no traffic. And I just stood there for ages, just enjoying the evening sky. And it was, um, the moon was overhead and Mars was just there and the conjunction was just hanging down there in the western sky. It was a beautiful mm. sight. So, you know, still get out there and have a look if you haven't seen it yet. Um, they're those two bright stars in the western sky, um, very, very close together and will be for some time. So that was pretty amazing. And, um, and of course, the solstice, has been so much has been happening. And it, we're in that sort of zone between Christmas and New Year, which always somehow energetically just feels like a pause. And mm. I think astrologically, it's a bit of a pause. You know, we had the big build up to Christmas. And yeah, I think we all need to catch our breath, don't we? We do. And I think it's a, a lovely opportunity to just um, chill for a, a few days anyway. And, you yeah. know, just, and, you know, things get really quiet at this time of year after Christmas and, um, and then we kick off into the new year. So here we are now at the full moon in Cancer. So that the exact timing of that, and I'm speaking Brisbane time here, is on the 30th of December, 1.28 p.m. is the exact moment. But, of course, at 1.28, you're not going to see the full moon. So, but, but the evening before, on the um, 29th, and on the morning and on the night of the 30th, you will actually, and of course the following night, the moon's going to be very bright. Yeah. Um, and in her fullness in the sign of cancer, the moon is at eight degrees, 53 minutes of cancer, opposite the sun at eight degrees, 53 minutes of Capricorn. So yes, Jupiter and Saturn have now left Capricorn. Yeah. The world rejoices. Um, but of course... <laughs> Pluto's still there for a couple more years and the sun is now in. That was what the solstice was all about. The sun at this time of year moves into the sign of Capricorn. Mm. So we've still got this Capricorn energy and I'm going to link that in with Cancer. So in terms of our just, you know, our normal daily human experience of sun in Capricorn, it can be a time to focus, get serious, like as if we need more seriousness yeah. this year. I don't think we do really, but, but, but Capricorn is about, focus and responsibilities, you know, that word responsibility has many layers of meaning to it, you know, like what, what is my responsibility here inside of me to myself and my commitment to my life and who I am? What are my personal responsibilities? And, and that can bring in um, the sign of cancer because in cancer our focus is on our personal life, the personal realm, family, those near and dear to us, home, home base. If we extend that energy, that idea out into the world, it can also include things like our, our sense of belonging, our sense of nationality, you know, where I come from. I'm 
and Australian on some level where, where none of those things, of course, actually, we're all human beings living on this planet and who knows where we've come from. But, you know, in terms of this life, embodied life, it's that sense of belonging and connection. And if you've all been able to enjoy some time together with family and close friends and those that, you know, are really near and dear to you. You know, that phrase I think is very Cancerian. Mm, yeah. And enjoy that kind of closeness and intimacy and connection. That's what cancer is all about. And and that um, the, the opposition to, to Capricorn, those two signs, mm. There's so many things we could say about them, but together there, there's a lot about responsibility, obligation, connection, maturity, wisdom. In cancer, it's a, it's a water sign, so it's a feeling and it's felt and it's emotional, as emotional bonds. In Capricorn, it's more of an earthy sense of, um, you know, responsibility, our ability to respond to what is required in a situation and be a bit grown up about it. Mm, I'm just thinking while you're talking about cancer being a water sign and Capricorn an earth sign, you know, you put them together and it creates mud. It can absolutely <laughs> create. But, but, of course, in that mud, it also the water makes earth really fertile, doesn't it? Yes, it does, yeah, yeah. But, so, yes, it can get muddy. Yes, I was just thinking that and um, clay feet comes to mind for some reason. Yes. You know, but I was also thinking about um with Capricorn, I've noticed it's it's a real distilling down of just the essentials, the bare essentials. Exactly. And I think that I was saying to you before our recording that um, I'm aware of people um, of my daughter's age group in their 30s who are doing Christmas big but doing it all at home, yes. going out with family. So it's about, I think, for some people it would be, they would have had to see that my family this is important and it's essential to me, you know? Exactly, exactly. That's, yeah. that's really great. It's true. In, in Capricorn particularly, we, we do get back to what is the most fundamental baseline here for mm. me, you know, and in Cancer, these two signs have got a lot to do with, with tradition and protection of what's really important of what I really value and you know I can do without this and I can do without that and I don't need that and I don't need that but this is what's important yes yeah yeah that's, that's right and yeah. and and just like I hadn't you know we me and my sort of extended family group um you know, which is made up of my ex-husband and his family and all sorts of people. We do like to get together a few times a year. We have a wonderful time together. And we haven't seen each other as a group. We've seen each other separately in bits and pieces all year. And so we just had a, a beautiful day together just enjoying being together. Yes, yes, you know? it's and, nice. Yeah, and, and it's sort of, it's that reminder of, yes, this is, this is of great value. Yeah. Know? these connections yeah and this this week um i plan to have um a small group a dozen people here for lunch on the day of uh, where the full moon goes into cancer although i hadn't actually looked at the sign but i thought well that's really interesting because yeah. these people i consider to be my soul family exactly they're not the people i sit down and have breakfast with they're the people that uh we have shared interests uh, alternative right. people uh, and soulful people and I'm really looking forward to us all getting together that's a beautiful thing and and you know cancer is ruled by the moon and so when the moon is in cancer for those two and a half days that she so that means that you know she'll be she'll be going into cancer on the morning of the 30th and she'll be there for two and a half days so so it's like that full moon energy in cancer is really completing the year Mm. And I think that's beautiful. You know, who are those people that are in your heart that you feel soul connection with? And sometimes if we're lucky, that includes actual blood family members. It may include <laughs> some and not others. You know, we all have family <laughs> stories and family yes. dynamics. You know, everyone does. Yes. Um, but there are other people that we have that same sense of real family that where we, we care about these people deeply. You know, they're they're in here aren't they and and because the moon astrologically speaking we associate with the soul you know our 
soul connections, our soul sense of who we are and what we value. Yeah. Yeah. And some years ago I was spiritually adopted by a lovely lady who lives in Brisbane and she even gave me a, a certificate, did oh. up a certificate with her and her husband. They spiritually adopted me. And I think that sort of thing that comes up as well under this sign, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. And and it's also, you know, the enjoy what do we what do families do when they come together? They eat. There's food. <laughs> You know, isn't there? Like, like cancer is a sign of food and nourishment, you know, the mother feeding the child. And, and, and the mother feeding the child isn't just about the physical nourishment of the milk. And I'll use breastfeeding just because it's a really potent symbol, I think, for cancer. And there's no judgment on there whether a mother breastfeeds or, or feeds in other ways. But um, it's, it's a really potent image for cancer. Mm. But it's an emotional thing as well. And so any of you who've got strong cancerian energies in your chart, you'll know that we have a strong emotional relationship with food. And so, you know, like, I mean, I grew up in a family that like food and family, like, it's a fairly big family and the family getting together was just food everywhere. Yes. And so, but in Capricorn, <clears throat> it's not always like that. You know, Capricorn says, oh, you don't need that. You don't need that. And it might just sit down to a toasted sandwich. But in cancer, no, it's a bit like the big Italian mama, you know, there's got to be. And then there's always people worrying, oh, will there be enough food? Like, will there be enough food? There's always <laughs> tons of food. There's food left over. Well, you know, added to that is also the sun in Sagittarius. And, you yeah. know, in this time of year, um, I mean, Sagittarius loves a smorgasbord, for goodness sake. Yes. You know, I'm a Sagittarius, I know. <laughs> selection, that's exactly. Yes, and you've got to have oodles of it. You've got to have plenty more than you actually need all the time you know that's that's right so and it's also about the harvest you know yes. with the summer solstice as well yes. you've got the harvest of the bounty of the work from the year or for that's the last right. six months and all the things you've been growing so there's food 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 everywhere <laughs> that's exactly right and 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 so th there's this amazing sort of juxtaposition between these two signs they they both have a strong sense of tradition and history and past so, you know, families get together and there's very, it's very, very common for, you know, stories about, oh, I remember when you were, and, you know, the little grandchildren are there, oh, just like you when you were a little girl. And, you know, all of those conversations about memories, mm. which is a very Cancer Capricorn thing to mm. remember because they sort of reinforce in a way those bonds and connections and, you know, people remember an incident back, you know, years ago. Yeah, yeah, and it's if you're sitting around the table and you're listening to your rallies and your, all your friends tell the same stories over and over and over again, just let them, you know, exactly. because it it it, uh, it revivifies the good. Hopefully, they're telling good stories. Yeah, the that's positive right. energies and the and the you know the, the fond that, memories. That's right, the the fondness. So so this is cancer, but of course, a full moon always is very heightened energy, and and we mustn't forget that that. When the moon is full for those few days, particularly when she's full in a water sign and in her own sign of cancer, it's particularly strong. And so people's emotions, like the seas, you know, and nature, everything is full when the moon is full. Everything is up. The sap is rising. The seas are moving. The, you know, all of nature is full. And so our emotional nature so there may be some family issues there may be some things that come up um, but I think it's a good time for us to look at on an emotional level what am I needing right now cancer is a sign of what are my emotional needs mm. and that will vary for everyone and a lot of that you know speaking astrologically you know it depends where cancer sits in your chart you know what house is it in is it in a really social outgoing house is it in a more private sort of area is it to do with your career so where is cancer in the birth chart can you know really um show you you know that's the area of life that i'm going to want to be focusing on for those few days mm -hmm. you know, while the moon's in that sign and that's how i will feel nourished and nurtured because it's this is the sign of nourishment and nurture and and care and for some people that might be oh I want to go out and help other people I want to make sure you know my elderly neighbors have got enough food and yeah. that they're okay you know that's cancer yeah 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 like, like Capricorn tends to tough it out 
Mm. And cancer will, you know, put their hand on your arm, and say, "Hello, darling. How are you going? What do you yes. need?" Yes, you know, it's more, it's more intimate in that way. Yeah, and Capricorn tends to expect other people to tough it out too. Yes, that's right. You know, you be know. strong, be tough, be yeah. stoic. Yes, yeah. no, <laughs> and no, and and cancer's all kind of soft and nurturing and yeah, cuddly. You know, it is. That's the nature of it. Oh, isn't it good that we're all different? <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> Super wonderful. So, so the, the cancer full moon. So emotions can definitely be heightened. There might be, um, you know, so, a certain amount of drama. Now, about a day and a half after the exact full moon, so we're looking at, you know, right on the end. In fact, I did a – we'll come to that shortly. Uh, yeah, so even into the new year on the 1st of January – the moon will still be in Cancer and will be making an opposition to Pluto in Capricorn. So there could be a period during the 1st of January where there might be some emotional intensity going on and a bit of emotional drama, possibly on the family home front. You know, and with Pluto there, I guess it could be the end of some relationship for a while. It could be. Yeah. You know, things can get a bit emotionally fraught. And, yeah. um, you know, it can highlight themes around... You know, I don't feel loved. I don't feel nurtured, supported by you. Um, you know, there's no connection going on. These are themes that will really come up mm. while there's a full moon in Cancer. Are we getting our emotional needs met? And it's not to blame somebody else. It's to get really clear about what they are for me, for me, yeah. for me you know. And if I'm not getting them from here, where else do I get them from? Someone else or do I need to find it in myself? Yeah. And with the cancer, with the, just the crab alone, right, it has that hard exterior shell. Yes. But it's got that soft underbelly. Very soft and underbelly. And so it's very sensitive. Mm -hmm. mm. So, and, and it's in that time when we feel emotionally hurt, which can easily happen with cancer, the withdrawal into the shell. You know, go into your room and shut the door and... You know, and, and if you notice Cancer Aaron's doing that, and that might come up over these day, few days, um, just my suggestion is leave them be. They will re-emerge when they're ready, when they've processed the feelings and they're ready to emerge again, you know, just leave them to their cave. <laughs> really. I'm, not, I'm giggling because my daughter's a Cancerian, so she, she was a little bit of hard work growing up. <laughs> yes, and, and because we're all different, so so if the parent's not like that... yeah. Kind of having trouble understanding what's the problem yeah. here and trying to fix it. Where my recommendation is always just leave them be, you know. Yes. Yes, yeah. leave them to the cave. You know, the crab has to crawl. You know, if it feels danger, it just, what does it do? It goes back down into the sand. Yeah, yeah. So it is. Yeah. yeah. But, but when the moon is full in Cancer, there's not a, a, a lot of places to hide. It's like she's out there. Like all the feelings are out there. Um, but it's a lovely, I think it's a lovely time if you're inclined towards honouring the feminine and the goddess and, and that kind of archetypal energy, going out under the full moon night while she's in cancer and really, like literally, you might have heard the phrase, draw down the moon, like literally go out there if you're inclined this way and tune in and feel that energy of the moon pouring down into you, you know, the divine mother. Mm. So, you know, that, and, and if you think of the sun, if, if the full moon in Cancer is overhead, down under your feet is Capricorn, solid ground, rock, stand on the earth, you know, be really earth and open to all that beautiful energy of Cancer, you know, coming and literally receive it, you know, can mm. do a profound thing. With, with all those, um, um, you said before, with all the uh, emotions out there, mm -hmm. I think you said, um, that also brings in the um, a psychic aspect too, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's, yeah. It is actually a very intuitive, often psychic sign, Cancer. Mm. Highly uh, um, intuitive and attuned. Mm. Mm. What's going on in the field around them, you know, like, very kind of conscious energetically what's going on in the family with different dynamics and so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feeling that and sensing that all the time. Mm, mm. Mm. Fascinating. Wow. Yeah. So that's cancer. So what else do we got? Yeah, that's, 
So, so that's cancer, you know, like make sure you've got some nice food in the house and, um, and, and really to, in whatever ways you're able to do what really feel that nurtures you, you know, that may not be what other people are expecting or wanting from you even. You might feel a need to withdraw for a period of that time. Mm. You know, it's like go, go away and leave me alone. Yeah. So that, yeah. that can really come up for, for quite a lot of people. So, um, and of course, Saturn and Jupiter are now still in the conjunction and will be for some time before Jupiter starts to really pull away and make quite a bit of distance from Saturn because Jupiter is moving more quickly. But that conjunction is going to be in place for um, certainly all through January. Okay, um, that's quite know, well. and, Yeah, I mean, they're, they're starting to separate, but it's mm. a very small distance. So, um, you know, Saturn currently is just at one and Jupiter's at two. So Jupiter will be slowly pulling away mm. and they might actually join up precisely again. Mm. It, you know, it's happened. The, the actual conjunction has happened and that's it. And even though Saturn continues to move through Aquarius, it only gets to a certain degree, whereas Jupiter moves more quickly and will literally move through the whole sign through this coming year. Mm, so yeah. they're moving at different speeds. Um, so oh, I wanted to also say Mercury's in Capricorn too. Oh, in my, natal, my natal Mercury's in Capricorn. Wonderful. <laughs> so Mercury actually moved into Capricorn the same day that the sun did, which was super interesting because the solstice, in our summer is always when the sun is at zero degrees of Capricorn. It just happened this year that Mercury was at zero Capricorn the same day. So they entered that sign together and Mercury is thinking, communication, words, how we speak. And Mercury in Capricorn, people, and when it's in Capricorn, you know, we're thinking about serious things. We might be thinking about our work. We might be beginning to think ahead to the following year and starting to think seriously about plans. Now, you know, I spent a lot of time this time last year with a calendar going through it with a fine tooth comb astrologically. And I'm not a great person to plan ahead. I, that's not really how I roll. But last year I did. I just got, okay, I'm going to work this out for the year. And I worked out a whole year and the whole thing very quickly got thrown out the window. So <laughs> but, but it is when Mercury's in Capricorn, we are thinking about, you know, dates, calendars, planning. Oh, how, how am I going to plan? Um, um, you know, our work, our responsibilities and so on. But on um, the 8th of January, Mercury will leave Capricorn. So he's moving really quickly through Capricorn. Zoom. And on Mercury the 8th, he'll leave Capricorn and go into Aquarius, where he'll be for a good three weeks, certainly to the end of January. Now, Mercury in Aquarius, he's pretty excited to be in Aquarius. Because <laughs> Mercury, you know, astrologers have said often, and I, I, I agree with this, that Mercury is like the lower octave of the planet Uranus. They have both okay. to do with the mind and with knowledge. And Mercury is our thinking mind. In, in Capricorn, Mercury is very practical and pragmatic mm. and organized, yep, yeah? and very sensible. In Aquarius, the mind starts to go whoosh, and expands right out and becomes more um, focused on the big picture, humanity, the cosmos, the universe. Fantastic time to be getting into astrology while Mercury is in Aquarius. You know, the mind is kind of switched on mm. and wired up for that. In fact, I'm, I'm speaking at a conference on Mount Tambourine in early February and the sun and Mercury will be in Aquarius, as will Jupiter and Saturn. So, you know, in Aquarius, people want to come together and share ideas and knowledge. Astrology is one of the things that's ruled or governed by the sign of Aquarius. Mm. But it's that impulse <clears throat> time of year. Astrologers are always busy when these planets are going through Aquarius, you know, because it's vibrating with that sort of energy. Mm. And so people want to come together and connect and talk about these bigger things and these yeah. bigger ideas and be, they want to be together. 
Is, is it a higher mindedness? Yes, very much. Okay. Yeah. So the mind starts to really go out and go, okay, well, I've been through the Capricorn phase of getting organized. And that can even translate to, okay, I've got to sort out my pantry. I've got to, you know, I've got to get my taxes in order. I've got to, um, you know, my car needs repair. And, mm. you know, we start, we, we're really doing those kind of very practical, realistic things. Mm. Very pragmatic. And we make decisions. Okay, I'm not going to spend any money on this, 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 and this, and this. I'm going to tighten my belt, which is yeah. very, all good Capricorns know about tightening the belt. <laughs> You yes. know, do, do without. You don't need that. Yes. Um, but in Aquarius, we're going up into into this other level of consciousness. You know, and we're now looking to the future. Yeah. Into ideas, into humanity, and you know the bigger themes of the world, and so on. Mm. And I guess thinking about the consequences of this year going into 2021 yes. as well, but that's in a right. different way. That's yeah. right. And and it's a sign of vision. You know, mm. what's vision? And it's a big picture thing. In Capricorn, the vision is kind of grounded and pragmatic. Mm. In Aquarius, the vision is more, actually, it's more abstract. Mm, yes, yeah. You know? Yeah. Abstract ideas and concepts that doesn't necessarily mean it's not real or valid, but, you know, the mind's wired up in a different way in Aquarius. And, you know, Mercury actually likes being in Aquarius. It's like, yeah. whoa, it's mind really gets plugged in in a way that it, likes yeah um so i, I want to come back i sort of jumped ahead a little bit on the first of january as i do every year i created the birth chart for the year ahead oh ooh, yes and I, I i've set it for brisbane so i'm just going to hold it up oh yeah it doesn't mean anything to a lot of people but mm -hmm. I, i've circled a few areas of interest so down here on that date, there and for the following day as well, the planet Venus, which is um, currently in Sagittarius, will be in Sagittarius conjunct the South Node. Now, Venus in Sagittarius, which is where she is now, and any of you who have Venus in Sagittarius, and the people I know really fit. Oh, no, with, I don't. <laughs> okay, yep. Um, this is like time. I'm sort of making light of this in a way, but it's definitely there. It's this is party time. You know, Venus is all about pleasure and enjoyment and people and connecting. She's the you know the, the goddess of love, of beauty, of enjoyment mm. and pleasure. And in Sagittarius, it's yeah, let's let our hair down and have some fun mm. and um, just enjoy freedom. Now, not everyone's got. You know, a lot of people's freedom has been curtailed currently or at different times throughout the year. Um, but within that, how can we, while Venus is in Sagittarius, still find enjoyment, fun, pleasure? Um, and, and the pleasure is the pleasure of just having a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not talking here so much about sensual, sexual pleasure, although that can be a part of it as well. It's more just having a good time and enjoying yourself. Mm. So it's lovely during the Christmas holiday period, you know, to have Venus and Sagittarius because we are more inclined to want to get together and just enjoy. Mm. What about our values? Our well, Venus yes, affects values, the Venusian values. Um, in Sag Sagittarius, the sign of the centaur shooting the arrows upwards, you know, the, the, the values are about aiming high, looking up, looking out, aiming for truth, um, honouring truth, seeking truth. Sagittarius is the sign of the seeker, the searcher. Mm. And, and it's an interesting sign. There's a certain wild aspect to Sagittarius. When I think about some of the, the many wonderful people I know who are Sagittarians, and I do know a lot, there is that wild streak you know, which are because it's the centaur, and the lower half of the centaur is a horse. It's animal. It's our instinctive, physical, animal nature that has us a touch of the wild. Mm. And it was said, and I've been to here on a sacred sites two years ago with a bunch of amazing astrologers, and it was wow. And 
we went to the hills of Thessaly in Greece, which is where Chiron the centaur and the centaurs were said to have lived, and it's a wild country. And so, the, and that's why Sagittarians love to get out into the outdoors. Mm. You know, hit the open highway, go camping, go trekking. You know, that's the Sag energy. You've got to get out there into the wild spaces. So even if there is constraint and constriction in your world, some of us are going through that, some of us aren't, how can that energy, that, you know, freedom-loving, fun-loving kind of wild instinctual energy of Venus and Sag still find an outlet? Mm. Planning a trip, going on a trip, go camping, get in your car and just head off for a few days you know, hit the highway, don't necessarily have a plan because it's a mutable sign. And the mutable signs are all about movement and change and being flexibility, which is what Sagittarians do. You know, things don't go according to plan. That's okay. We'll do this. Yes. You know, it's positive. <laughs> it's a very positive energy. Yeah. So th that's, that's a really lovely thing. While the sun and Mercury are in Capricorn, Venus is in Sagittarius. If, the, if she was... In Capricorn as well, things would be feeling a lot more sombre. Mm, yes. A bit more We've had enough of that. <laughs> We've had a lot of that. Yes. Absolutely. Now, um, on the 7th of January, and this is significant, Mars, who has been in Aries since the middle of this year, and he's normally in a sign for about six weeks. But in 2020, Mars, in all his wisdom, decided to spend six months in his own sign of Aries because he went through that big, long 10-week retrograde phase. Yeah. So th that's been a really important part of the events of 2020. Mars in Aries, exalted in his own sign, powerful in his own fiery sign, the planet and sign of the warrior, um, leaves Aries after all this time and moves into grounded, practical, fixed earth sign of Taurus. Mm -hmm. That is a change of energy. So when Mars is in Aries, there's a lot of fire and heat and our blood is up and we're, you know, we're feeling uh, in some ways combative, uh, mm -hmm. confrontation, and that's not, I'm not suggesting that's always a bad thing. It can manifest into, you know, violence and real outward expressions of aggression, but it gets the blood moving. In Taurus, Taurus always follows Aries. We slow the energy right down. We ground ourselves. We become more anchored. Mm. And Mars can feel a bit frustrated in Taurus because Taurus is ruled by Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. Mars is full of hot fire yeah. and it's wanting to get Taurus moving and you think Taurus wants to move? Not really. No, they don't. <laughs> no, you know, it wants to ground itself and anchor itself and put down roots, strong, stable foundations. But Mars in Aries is actually very strong because Taurus is a very strong sign, known for its stubbornness and its willfulness. Yeah and resistance to change, Mars comes charging in and is trying to, you could say, fire Taurus up. And I've always said Taurus is slow to anger, but when the anger comes, get out of the way. Mm, yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm. Because, and it is. I mean, I've been around Taurus energy a lot in my life and in my childhood, mm. and it is a sign that it's slow to anger. Yeah, And it, it can feel sometimes like it takes a bit to get that energy moving. But once it gets moving, there is a lot of power in Taurus. Mm. Yes. Look at the bull. You know, yeah. the bull might look placid standing there in the paddock in the field. But if provoked, you do get out of the way because the power of that energy will just keep going and will steamroll over the top of absolutely everything. Yes. <laughs> yep. So it, it has a forcefulness about it. Mm, very much yeah. so. Very determined. And 
you know, anyone you know with Mars in Taurus, you'll see that. You'll see that determination. You will not stop me. Mm. You know, and they may go about that quietly and they will just keep going, keep going. And you're trying to go, no, no, I don't think that's a good up. Once it gets moving, it will keep going till it achieves and accomplishes its goal. Yeah. Having said that, I'm just thinking about the weather now because Mars in Taurus, um, you know, it, Taurus being the Earth sign and Mars the activity, we may see possibility that we may see more, um, you know, geological activity next year. Absolutely. Or geophysical. And, absolutely. And especially because um, once Mars gets into Taurus, what it's doing is it's going to be approaching the planet Uranus. Yes. I was just going to say that. Uranus is going through exactly. Taurus, isn't it? Exactly. And the, con the exact conjunction with Uranus occurs on the 20th of January, wow. which... Um, Interestingly, is the date of the inauguration of the US president. Mm, wow. It's a set date that occurs every four years. It's a set yeah. date. Wow. Now, isn't that amazing that that's going to occur right on the Mars-Uranus conjunction? Now, that c combination of Mars and Uranus is a highly, highly volatile combination of energies. And we could say a lot about it. And some of us have a Mars-Uranus connection in the chart, in their own birth chart. I have a trine between the two. So I, I kind of, I'm a bit attuned to that energy. Mm. Um, when they're conjunct, that means they've literally joined forces. You know, Mars is, there's many things. We could sit here and talk for about two hours about all the different permutations of that combination. Yeah. But, you know, Mars is the warrior energy and assertion and action and energy. And Uranus is about revolution and change and disruption and breakdowns and breakthroughs and, you know, breaking through to higher consciousness, revelation, shocks, surprises, mm. the unexpected. So you've got fiery Mars meets this highly charged energy of Uranus, which is always a catalyst for change when it's triggered. And, and you mentioned earth movements. That's a kind of classic scenario for earth activity. Mm. In Taurus, absolutely, the ground can move. You know, Uranus is in Taurus now for seven years. Yeah. Moved in in 2018. And it's, um, it's a very strong thing because, you know, Taurus is a fixed earth sign. Its whole function is to stabilise and anchor and hold things in place, to build. It's the sign of the builder, the builder, yeah. the farmer, earth, the earth, the soil, the dirt, growing food, stability, you know, money, finances, security, those kinds of energy. Uranus in Taurus is is during the seven year period creating a lot of turmoil and instability in a sign that's determined to make stable. Mm, mm. And it's a quite a strong willful sort of a sign in many ways. So Mars coming through from the seventh has entered the field only a few degrees away from the planet Uranus. And, and the conjunction on the 20th takes place at six degrees of Taurus. Mm. So it's already, it's, it's like Mars goes into Taurus and says, okay, Uranus, I'm here. You ready? Let's do this. Yeah. It's like that. Once it's entered that energetic field of Taurus. Um, so hang on to your hats, folks. There's... <laughs> Things are going to move. Well, I'm thinking there's there's already talk of, um, I mean, there was last year. I don't know what happened, but I know in China they had um, food shortages. They had a campaign, you know, for that. Um, so I'm, and there has been talk about that in the States as well. Yeah. 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 So, so thinking of this, the fact that it's in the sign of Taurus, mm. um, I just think it's, you know, intelligent and wise to consider you know, and I'm I'm not predicting what's going to happen because no. you cannot with Uranus. No. You know, things can happen in ways that go, wow, I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming. I knew things were going to happen, but I didn't see it quite like that. 
So, you know, to make sure you've got, um, you know, reasonable supply. Now, please don't go, you know, rushing out and panic buying everyone, but just, you know, you've got some basic fundamental supplies in your house. Just like in Australia, particularly in Queensland, every summer we do that. We make sure we've mm. got batteries for torches. We've got candles in the house, you know, yeah. cyclones. Things happen. Yeah. And you want to make sure you're okay for a few days. That's yeah, all. That's, that's right. all. Put petrol in the car, get a bit of cash out of the bank. You know, I'm not predicting anything, you know, hugely radical. Yeah. That's always a possibility as well. Yeah. We live in very potent times. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're in this period where, you know, so much is shifting and nothing is really certain or predictable. So... Yeah, Mars in now the other thing on a personal level, you know, what might Mars in Taurus feel like to us? It can feel like our own determination can really start to kick in. We can, on a very instead of necessarily feeling all fired up and feisty, we might just get really grounded and strong in our body and say, Okay, I can see what I need to do and where I need to go. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And we get very kind of pragmatic and realistic and we start taking action in very pragmatic ways mm. you know and um i remember an, an old an astrology friend of mine years ago said something like she has mars in taurus and when she had a really powerful transit to that for a period of a year she completely transformed her garden Ah, like moving yeah. rocks around, transplanting trees, yeah. digging up garden beds. Like, because Taurus is also, you know, landscaping in the garden. Mm. So, it can be a fantastic time just to get out there and actually get physical. Taurus is the body, you know, put the body to work. If you don't have a garden, go to the gym, get your muscles moving, get strong. Mm. If you know any Taurians, and I do, they're strong. They're often physically strong, but there's a strength. So, you know, I think put Mars to work when he's in Taurus and he'll be there for about six weeks. So that's all through January and into about the first half of um, February. So I really wanted to speak about that one because it's significant after this long journey through Aries. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, it's... Mm. Just, just to keep saying the same things over and over again. It's just been a long, hard road. A long, hard road. That's yeah. right. That's mm. right. And I, you know, I did a, a day here. Um, a bunch of beautiful people came. Where, and I like to do this every year. At the end of the year, I do a whole day workshop on all of the energies coming up for the next year. And so Uranus in Taurus has not been one of the major players throughout 2020. It's there doing its thing. Mm. But in 2021, Uranus in Taurus is absolutely going to be a key player mm. because it's going to be getting the squares from one square from Jupiter, but then throughout the year, three squares from Saturn in Aquarius. So, mm, okay. so the, instead of the focus being so much on Capricorn and Aries as it's been in 2020, the focus is going to be on Taurus and Aquarius, two uh -huh. fixed signs in a square aspect to each other. So there's a lot of a lot of um, kind of tension in a way between those two signs, but something really amazing can come out of that, out of mm. that tension between those two quite powerful signs. Yeah. So we will definitely look at that in more detail as the year unfolds yes yes so I, I just think this this coming together of mars and uranus you know in january is sort of setting the tone in a way because it's it's like it's activating uranus going okay you're on uranus this is your year and um yeah we'll just see a lot more unfold around that and, so, and look for many people Myself included, those of us who are a bit wired up with Uranian energy, mm -hmm. meaning we have quite a signature of Aquarius in our chart, and most people who are listening to this probably do, is my yeah, yeah. assumption, um, and or the planet Uranus will be strongly placed in their chart in some way. 
So for those of us who are inclined and re respond and vibrate with that energy, we're like, yes, this is great news. You know, it can actually feel exciting, like, okay, things are going to really start to move mm. in that more Uranian Aquarian way. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it it's, can be quite exciting, actually. Yes, I know a few people who've got strong Aquarius placements and they've all been saying, oh, can't wait, can't wait. You know? no, that's not, that's <laughs> not. I, I'm, I'm always the, um, a little bit more cautious bit, uh, and I think, well, yeah, I'm looking forward to that because I've got Aquarius in the first house, but, yeah. you know, um, I'm just, uh, I'm just cautious, more cautious in wishing for things because it is Uranus and Aquarius. Yes, you know? Yeah, that's that's right. So things completely get, unexpected. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I yes, it it absolutely is not. Um, it's not going to be welcomed by everybody, and no. it's not going to be easy for many. Yeah, you know. Mm. But yeah, we we will definitely look at that. There'll be a lot more to say about that as the as the year goes on. So. On the seventh, Mars goes into Taurus. On the eighth, Mercury leaves Capricorn and goes into Aquarius. We mentioned that earlier. On the ninth, Venus leaves Sagittarius and goes into Capricorn. Mm. So, you know, so from the ninth, we're going to have Venus. Mercury will have left. Then Venus comes in behind Mercury. So we'll have the sun and Venus in Capricorn. So Venus is the feminine principle of, you know, of beauty, of love, of connection so, and, and our values. So our values and our um, need for connection and relationship takes on a more earthy, pragmatic sort of a tone and, you know, themes around commitment, responsibility and so on. Mm. So she, she's had her fun in Sagittarius. You know, and now she's going to get, okay, time to get. It's like that. I love the way the Zodiac works. It's the most amazing system. It is. You know, mm. you, you kind of get to expand and have fun and travel and enjoy life. And then we go into Capricorn. Okay, time to get serious now. And, and a lot of people feel like that. They go away and have an amazing holiday and kick up their heels and have a fantastic time. Okay, time to get back to work now. Well, this is what I'm thinking with Venus going into Capricorn. It's it's going to be okay. Now let's get serious about money, or money. The money issues are going to get serious. Yes. Yeah. And and so you know, having to make choices and um, and yeah. you know, and it's that thing of oh God, I spent so much money over Christmas. Now I need to tighten my belt. Yeah. And Venus being a money planet, she's yeah. also got to do with money. Mm. The ruler of Taurus. Mm. Um, Interesting. Yes. Then um, there's a few other bits and pieces, but I'm going to... Oh, no, actually, I will bring this in. Then on the 10th, Mercury, now in Aquarius, will make a conjunction with Saturn. And then on the 12th, it will make the conjunction with Jupiter. So Mercury in Aquarius, bringing more energy to the Aquarian vibe, right? Mm -hmm. So then we'll have Mercury with Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius, 10th, 12th um, and then continuing on through Aquarius hmm. now I you know looking ahead at the new moon and we'll um, unwrap that one closer to the time the new moon in Capricorn also has the planet Uranus stationary turning direct and Mercury in Aquarius squaring Uranus so that new moon brings in another energy but between now and then we're seeing this shift of mars from taurus particularly and mercury into aquarius i think they're the sort of main um themes and it's like they are introducing mars in taurus and mercury in aquarius kind of introducing the energies that we're going to see playing out a lot more in the year ahead mm, yeah yeah and if we look at more closely at the chart of 2021, like when we looked at the birth chart of 2020, there were, it was almost like every planet was in Capricorn. Mm. There was such a gathering 
all crowded together in that sector of the sky that we refer to as Capricorn. Mm. It was phenomenal. Like, you know, we, we know that a, a stellium is when you have, say, four planets really closely together in someone's birth chart. Mm. This was like a double stellium. It was just, it seemed like almost every planet was there. This is different. We still, we will have the sun, Mercury and Pluto, of course, in Capricorn, but Jupiter and Saturn are, are in Aquarius. Mm. Um, and making the early squares to the planet Uranus. And, of course, it's the full moon. So the moon will still be very full. So right out, so I did the chart for midnight. So if you go outside around that time at midnight, um, you know, New Year's Eve, um, start of the new year, and look up ahead, you are going to see the full moon in Cancer directly overhead i think that's quite spectacular actually mm. that's not something that would always happen that it would happen right on that full moon energy so even though the full moon was technically the day before she's still full because she's she's going to be full for a few days so that would be beautiful even if you're not going out partying and being with people i mean i just often go to bed like normal and wake <laughs> up to the new year yeah. but you know, mm -hmm. if, even if you just wanted to stay up and just go walking, it wouldn't even have to be at midnight, like just, you know, it could be at mm. 11 o'clock yeah. or even, you know, later in the, the next day if you wanted to. Um, you're going to be standing under the full moon in Cancer. And it's like that's an energetic that even though the moon moves on and she'll move on and do 13 cycles through the year, it's still an energetic imprint for the year ahead. Mm. The full moon and Capricorn down underneath. We're standing in the Capricorn energy, but the full moon's in sign of Cancer. And so I think maybe something to say about that would be, I think an important theme for the year ahead is about, you know, remembering to, to take care of ourselves and, and for those that we love and care about and those in our personal intimate circle, whether they're blood connections or soul otherwise soul connections you know those that we care about that we have a sense of intimacy and closeness with mm, you yeah. know and to remember to because during these times you, you know you know there's this sort of divide that's going on and it's causing a lot of disruption in family relationships and friendships and you know partnerships and so on so yeah so with it being uh in Aquarius, um, that could also extend out to our greater family, our greater human tribe, our, that's, you know, absolutely. Oh, that absolutely. we care about. That, yeah. that we care about, that's yeah. right. And I what guess, do we care about? Who do we care about? And that's Yeah, right. and I, could, I think 2020 has sort of um, made us become more aware of what's going on in other countries, you know, in a big, big way so that we have become, we've got, we've gained this panoramic, panoramic perspective of of the human family that's right yeah and we can see where you know there's a lot of people dying and there's other people who aren't and some countries have been struck by covid you know badly and others not or, or whatever's going on um and um yeah it's just and and we're staying in touch more with people our friends overseas and family overseas and that's just, and thank goodness for technology to be able to do that too. That's right. That's, we've that's right. we've certainly, I think, come to value more our human tribe. Yes. Yeah. That's, and get get emotionally involved with things that aren't even happening in our own country. That, that's right. That's right. It, that's that's right. That we are the human tribe. You know, mm. we're all on this planet together. That's mm. right. And yeah. and that's um. You know, I think that's going to be a part of the ongoing theme in the year ahead was this Aquarius energy is emphasized but remembering that it's square to Taurus because one of the which we will definitely talk more about in the year ahead every sign I, I say this again and again and again because it's really worth in reinforcing every sign has its shadow side every sign without exception there is no sign that's better or worse than any other except in our own personal opinion and experience. We might have reactions. Yes. But that's our own story, you know. 
the more shadow side of Taurus is a desire, and desire is a good word, to dominate and control. It's a fixed earth sign. It wants to control because I'm, Taurus says, my job is to anchor and stabilize and build and make it strong and yeah. stable. So I'll have more of that. Thank you. I'll have more of that. Thank you. And I'm going to own it and possess it and control it. Mm. So that is a is one of the unconscious, more negative impulses that, that can arise in Taurus and say, this is mine. You know, I own it and you can't have it. And mm. Aquarius says, oh, I thought we were all here sharing this planet together, <laughs> you know? And, and, it's not, and it's not to say that, you know, in Aquarius, like everything, everyone has to own everything. I'm not talking about communism, although there's an interesting place. And that's a whole other story. Again, we could talk for hours about that, but astrologically speaking. But it's more like, like that desire to want to own and control and possess for myself is going to come up against the bigger Aquarian vision. So, and it's not that one's right and one's wrong. It's like, how are these two energies going to come to terms with each other and find a way to work this out, mm. you know? Mm. I mean, that, that's sort of putting it simplistically, but we're going to see that story playing out in our own personal world. Yeah. And in field. Yeah. There's going to have to be some give and take, except one of those signs doesn't want to give. It. No, no, <laughs> he no. wants to keep it. So there's Absolutely. a push pull between material possessions and, as opposed to, um, I mean, that could even play out in resources as uh, right. as opposed to what's important for the human family. That's right. To survive and all those sorts of issues. I mean, that's I can right. see environmental issues playing out there. Well, that's another important theme with Taurus yeah. is the environmental issue. And, mm. and um, you know, and remember Uranus is in Taurus for seven years, the great awakener. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the energy that shakes things up and he's still got a few years to go and he's not finished mm. yet. So, yeah. um, you know, Uranus, it's like, it's like Taurus through the seven-year period with Uranus there, is receiving this higher energy of consciousness. It's almost like that Taurian impulse to own and possess and control is getting awoken to experience that in a whole different way, in a whole other mm. way. Mm. So it's, it's, um, it's so, so, so interesting. That's such an Aquarian thing to say. It's so interesting. <laughs> But when we're going through some of these struggles and very real issues in our daily reality, you know, it may not feel so interesting. It might just feel really difficult. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah prompting change when you don't want it. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So um, definitely, definitely more change coming. You know, yes, this mm. year is over and we're quite grateful to see the end of it. But things are going to continue to unfold. You know, the mm. story continues in a different kind of way. The energy is different, but the story continues. Yes. It's not just going to magically go back to where we were. That's never going to happen. No, no. Mm. Mm. Well, that's a bit to cogitate on for sure. Yes, it is. <laughs> I think I'll percolate on that for the rest of the day. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, we just keep. Keep watching and responding and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any workshops coming up? I haven't scheduled any yet. Now, I've been, see, I've been thinking about this, you know, and Mercury in yes. Capricorn is going to be time to, like, I'm really starting to, I have, I am doing a, um, as I said, I'm speaking at um, a conference on Mount Tambourine at Grail Haven on the first weekend of February. Mm -hmm. so people can contact me about that and I'll have more details about that very, very shortly. Um, and there'll be a group of astrologers coming together and, you know, people gathering up there. Mm. And I'm, I'm starting to really, you know, think about, okay, what's going to be my next workshops, both online through Zoom and also here mm. you know, in person. I like to do both. I, I love it yeah. when people come. Yeah, and we always have such a good day. But those shorter ones online are really helpful for people who can't, 
you know, physically yeah. get there. So, yeah. yeah. And can I ask what topic you're talking on at the conference? I'm still fine tuning it, but it's okay. very, but I'm really clear it's going to be around the Saturn in Aquarius square Uranus in Taurus theme, which which is going to be the dominant energetic theme of 2021. Okay. Right. So it's going to be around that. That's the big story. And we've already sort of touched on that, you know, that Aquarius Taurus. Mm. So it's going to be about that. I think and I'll the, have to go theme, with that. Yeah, do. The theme of the whole weekend is going to be around, you know, this this Aquarian energy, you know, mm. the, the, the Aquarian age energy. So I'm going to focus on that particular part of that story. Mm. Mm, wonderful. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. 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 So... Um, I'll have more specifics the next time we come together about. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just very aware that, you know, I did so much planning at the end of last year and the whole thing just got thrown out the window. So I'm kind of, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, and with that Uranian energy around, um, everything can get thrown out the window at the last exactly. minute, can't it? Yeah. Exactly. But, but I will definitely start to put a couple of things in place very mm. soon. Oh, great. For sure. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing all your thoughts. A pleasure. And your, your insights and your wisdom. And um, I'll look forward to the next uh, time that we do our Astro Update. Yes. And thank you, we'll everyone. 2021 then. Yes, wow. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And um, we look forward to seeing you again in, in the new year. Yes, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Bye, everyone. Bye.